Hello, McVeigh Dragons. Welcome to Mr. Thorne Music, Music Class, Volume 10. This is for kindergarten and first grade. Okay. Um, hopefully you uh, looked at last uh, week's video, Volume 9, and you added some uh, ostinato patterns to Skit to My Lou when I played it on guitar. And you worked on Row Your Boat. And we're able, you were able to make it into a round. Uh, I showed you how to do it with my... Uh, I use my phone as I have my computer, and I recorded the background part. I mean, recorded the melody and the um, guitar on the smartphone while I sang uh, part of the round. Okay, so you could get an idea how to do it. And hopefully, you're able to do that. And rounds is one way to make what's called polyphonic texture, which I'll talk about more at the end. I'm going to go ahead and do a review of the entire year briefly, um, and then we'll end up with harmony at the end. So, first of all. Uh, we started the year off with beat, our three main parts of the song. Okay. Mel uh, excuse me. Well, here's melody. We'll start with beat. Beat, melody, harmony. And steady beat is what we worked on. Putting the beat into a meter. And we worked on the meters of two, three, and four. All right, first of all, steady beat. Here's meter of two. Make the first beat loud, second beat soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, or one, two, and then you have meter three, which is loud, soft, soft, loud, soft, soft, loud, soft, soft, meter four, loud, soft, medium, soft, loud, soft, medium, soft, okay, and then we worked on rhythm patterns to play over top of our steady beat meter. We have pie, apple, gooseberry, huckleberry, apricot, strawberry, pot pie pie. Which one is this? Hopefully you said pot pie pie, right? Pot pie pie, okay? And then this one? All right, that would be what? Apple, how about this one? Hopefully you said Huckleberry, how about this one? Okay, that's Strawberry, how about this one? Alright, that's Gooseberry, how about, uh, I leave what I did not have, can't remember, how about this one? Hopefully you said Huckleberry. Um, what's that? Oh, that's easy, right? That's our pie pattern. Okay, I think I did them all. But if I didn't, uh, I think I did this activity early on in the videos, like Volume 1. <laughs> so you can probably look that up in my early, earlier videos and, and practice with that. Um, after we left Beat, we started working on Melody. In the winter and we talked we listened for notes that move by step leap repeat and we listened I had the xylophone and I was playing a flight of stairs right music steps like stairs and it was like this and that is do re mi fa so la ti do right that's it and it goes from the bottom step to the top step it's an octave right this is in this case we're in the key of C this is a C note here and a high C so that's a Octave leap up or octave leap down. And this is stepping. All right. Um, that's stepping up. This is stepping down. For leaps. Here's leaps here too. Leaping up. Leaping down. Repeated notes. Okay. So we practice listening for those. And by the way, that scale is a C major scale. And you have different scales, but we make melodies off of scale, notes of the scales. We make uh, harmony parts off of the scales too. We make chords off of the scales. The scales are, are building blocks. The notes of a scale are building blocks to make things from. Um, in this case, if you're making a melody, you want to make phrases from those notes from the scale. Make up your own. And they have, phrases have a beginning and an end, just like a sentence does. I know you're probably learning how to write a sentence maybe in school. Um, so, and I gave the example of Yankee Doodle, 
Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony, right? Stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Okay, two phrases there. And once you have enough phrases, generally four, you make a section, a musical section. Could be more, could be less, but four is the most common number to make a, make a section. And then once you have your sections, you put them in a certain order. If you have one section, well, that's all you got. It's an A section. But if you have a couple sections, like A and B, you put them in a certain order. If I go A, B, A, B, A, B, I'm in A, B form. If it goes A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, or A, B, A, B, A, B, A, that's A, B, A form. All right? Once you have your form, um, your song's kind of complete. Your mount, your is complete. Um, and then we also talked about note reading. And I had it on my makeshift uh, smart board here, right? Really, it's my TV. Um, where we had to make, I had up there, there uh, a PowerPoint presentation of the musical staff. We worked on reading some of the notes on the treble clef staff. Like we know the spaces are F-A-C-E. And the lines, the notes and the lines are every good boy does fine. Keep practicing that. Keep looking at the earlier videos um, and keep up with that. Keep up with the rhythm patterns. Keep up with the notes on the staff, reading the notes on the staff. <clears throat> and, and then um, we started working on harmony. During the spring, excuse me. <clears throat> During the spring. And we said a melody with no harmony is... Uh, monophonic texture. So if I sing Old MacDonald had a farm, e -I -E -I okay, that's a melody by itself. There's no chords being strummed. There's no ostinato being played with the melody. It's just a melody by itself, monophonic texture. If we add chords or an ostinato or both with the melody, then you have homophonic texture, which we talked about. And Last week's lesson, I did skip to my loo, and I asked you to uh, create an ostinato pattern for it. We know ostinato patterns are repeated patterns. You know, it could be something simple like, or it could be something like, <laughs> okay, got a little funky there with that one, right? Um, but anyway, you just you can create your own ostinato pattern, depending on how the chords are, and I you got to figure out what fits nicely. Um, and then I asked you to do row your boat, and we said um, there is three ways to make polyphonic texture. I'm not going to get into all those three ways right now. We just focused on one, and that was rounds, and that's when someone starts a melody, and once they get partway through the melody, someone else they continue singing, but someone else starts the melody from the beginning. So last week when you, we did Row Your Boat, um, I had you guys come in. You heard me singing, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily. And when I got to merrily, you started row, row, row your boat. So when I was singing merrily, you were singing row your boat. When I was singing row your boat, you had merrily. We weren't singing the same notes, nor were we singing the same words at the same time. Because I started the melody first, I was going to finish the, mel uh, the song first. But we, we did it three times through. And I finished first, and you finished second. If you followed, you know, followed me singing. All right. Hopefully, you were able to do that okay, because um, that creates some nice harmony. And that is around one way to make what's called polyphonic texture. And polyphonic texture is more than one melody being sung or played at the same time. More than one melody at the same time. Yeah, we uh, we did it. We took a, one melody, row your boat. And by stair-stepping it, we were singing it at the same time, at least parts of it. And that was polyphonic texture when we were doing that. Okay? I'm going to um, play a song for you, a little, just a little bit of it, called And a Lover by the Beatles. It's a really pretty song. And when I went over, you've got a friend of me on the piano and told you, uh, we evaluated it for chords and ostinato patterns. And I also mentioned that it had fills. And I also mentioned that it had walking bass line, okay, all those things are things that make a song sound interesting. I'm going to play a song, and it's got, it's going to start with what's called a minor chord, and if I go like this, that's a block chord. If I go like this, one note out of the chord at a time, that's an arpeggio. I know it's a big word, but 
Okay, I'm gonna use a lot of arpeggios in this. And it starts off with a little bass line here, like this. And it connects the chords. I'm gonna go like to A minor with an arpeggio, and I'm gonna go E minor with an arpeggio. And I'm gonna add some little scale things. Remember our do you know, the do re mi fa so la ti do. I'm gonna add some scale things from that scale. Now we're in the key of E minor, and I'm gonna use this is the G the the do re mi fa so la ti do. Or same thing we did in C, just starting with G. Do re mi fa so la ti do. I'm gonna use that scale in the song. Now the song's in E minor, but E minor and in the key of G use the same scale that make it up. I'm just going to start instead of starting E minor, instead of starting with this, we're going to start with the E. Keep going. But it's the same note, it's just it sounds a little different because you're starting with a different note. But I'll be using that scale, uh, okay, to make up little fills. Maybe some walking bass lines, you'll hear it. So listen how I do it, okay? I'll play it first and we'll break it down a little bit more for that. It goes like this. just a little part of it and I'm gonna break down what I was playing there okay I start out like I said this little nice little bass line okay uh, so I went da, da, da. now I'm an A minor chord arpeggio and I do this little note, couple notes off the scale E minor or G major scale whoops but they said same thing and now I do the little bass line bass thing again to E minor chord that's those same notes off that scale this is a kind of pull uh, a hammer on or a slur, small slur, and then I do it like this a walking bass line, okay, off the scale with notes of the chord as an arpeggio. Now I do the uh, A minor chord, I add in notes of the melody with my chord. Now I do this walking. Fast walking right up that scale with notes of the chord as an arpeggio. Now I did something like they're called the hammer ons or pull offs for guitar players, but they're also called slurs. Back to that again. And then I do this little run, little bass, little bass, walking bass, like that. But I do it as a Swiss slurs or hammer-ons, like that. I have the melody included with the chords. This is all G chord, just different ways of playing it. And then I went back and then it like that. So you see that harmony, you want to mix all these things together to make a nice sounding song. If you're playing a guitar or piano or, you know, if you can play, um, you know, chords, and then you throw an ostinato pattern in, or you throw some fills in, walking bass lines. And the walking bass lines are really fills, too, just a different type. Just, you know, you're just, you know, you're walking up from the bass notes on the guitar to low, lower sounding notes. Just, I did that a lot. I went, you know, but I'm doing this, like, rapid things on a couple notes of the chord with the, with the walking bass. Back to the melody with then I did I could go like this. Harmonics. Alright, you hear a lot of walking bass lines in there. Alright, just to make the song sound interesting. Okay. So Continue watching the videos, 
to feel free to, re to go ahead and watch older videos over and over again, and, and this one too, to get to learn. Um, I'll see you in the, in the fall. We'll do more. And on that note, I want you to have a great summer. I want you to uh, be kind to your parents, be helpful around the house, uh, practice, still practice social distancing, and uh, just be respectful. You're going to be best all the time. Okay? Have a great summer. Bye-bye.